everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the harvest throw, which you can see a photo of here in front of you. You can also head on over to my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and you'll find some more photos there of the blanket as well as the full written instructions on how to make this gorgeous throw. The tutorial that you are going to watch here shortly is going to be a tutorial geared for the beginner. So if uh, you are new to the art of crochet or uh, you've been doing it a little while um, but uh, still like the little extra guidance, this tutorial is going to be a full tutorial uh, showing you how to form each of the stitches as well as give you insight and tricks into the pattern. So for this pattern today, you're going to need a copy of the written crochet pattern. That direct link is in the description of this video. You're also going to need an eight millimeter crochet hook, which you can see here. Again, in the description of this video, there will be a link for the hook and also for the yarn if you would like to learn more about it. The yarn that I use in this blanket today is called the Karen Swirl Cakes, the Lovely Layers uh, variety. I'm going to be using the color of Toasted Blueberry. Now this yarn, it is a bulky weight yarn. If you take a look at the label, uh, on the yarn there you'll see the number five it's a bulky weight yarn if you would like to substitute your yarn and get uh, relatively the same dimensions of the blanket that I'm going to be working you're going to want to pay attention to this little symbol here the 9.5 single crochet stitches that means there's going to be nine point and a half stitches for every four inches so if you're substituting this yarn, you're going to want to take a look at your yarn label. You're going to want to find something that has a number in that spot there fairly close to this 9.5 using the 8 millimeter hook. This is an acrylic and a wool blend and you of course can use uh, any blend of yarn that you would like for, for this blanket. On my pattern, I have also included an optional fringe. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you how I create my fringe um, uh, at the end. You're going to need a total of six of these cakes for the blanket. Each cake has about 250 yards, so you're going to need about six of those. And then if you would like to add your fringe, you're going to need another half of a cake, so another 125 yards. So let's uh, grab our hooks and our yarn and we're going to learn how to crochet this harvest throw. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this video is going to be very beginner friendly uh, tutorial for absolute beginners. So I'm going to show you uh, how to work this pattern every step of the way. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot. This blanket pattern is worked back and forth in rows, so we need to start by making a foundation chain. To do that, we're going to start by making our slip knot. So picking up your yarn, I kind of just loosely fold it over like so. This is the end that's attached to the ball of uh, yarn. So I'm going to pick it up, cross it over, stick my fingers through that hole, reach through, and grab the end that is still attached to my ball of yarn, and then I'm going to pull it up through. That's going to make my slip knot. I'll show you one more time. So taking your yarn, cross it over, stick your fingers through that hole, and grab the end of the yarn that is still attached to the ball of yarn, and pull it through. That's your slip knot, and you'll see that it can move quite uh, easily. You're going to place the loop over your hook and pull the end that's attached to your ball of yarn just so the, the loop is uh, not too loose but not too snug either. You want it to be able to move freely over the shaft of the hook. We're then going to start by making a foundation chain. 
and our foundation chain is going to have a total of 151 chains. If you would like to change the size of your blanket, you're going to need an odd number of stitches. So today I'm going to chain 151 chains. To make a chain stitch, you're going to hold your hook in one hand, your yarn in the other hand, you're going to place your yarn over your hook and simply draw your hook through grabbing hold of that yarn and draw your hook and the yarn through the loop and you will be left with one loop, a new loop on your hook. This is your chain stitch down below. So you're going to do that a total of 151 times. Place your yarn on your hook and draw your hook through the loop 151 times. If you lose track of how many stitches you have, not to worry, simply take a look at your foundation chain and you'll see on the back side you have these nice little bumps. You're going to count each one of those, so one, two, three, four, five. I have a total of five stitches in my foundation chain. You do not count the loop on your hook. So continue until you have 151 chains and then meet me back here. Once you have your foundation chain of either 151 chains or of an odd number of chains, we're going to start the first row. Now this pattern is worked in a stitch pattern that is sometimes called the moss stitch. It's one of my favorite stitches uh, made up of single crochet and chain stitches. So you already know how to do a chain stitch. Next we're going to work our first single crochet. The next, the single crochet stitch is going to be worked into the third chain from your hook. So looking at those back bumps you count one, two, three. Into that third chain you're going to work a single crochet stitch. To work your single crochet you're going to insert your hook under, I like to work in the back bump, under that loop, yarn over, place the yarn on your hook and draw it through that loop. You'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over, and draw the yarn through both of those loops so that there's only one loop remaining. That is your single crochet stitch. Next you're going to chain one. Down on your foundation chain you're going to skip the next stitch, which is this one right here. Into the next one work another single crochet. So insert your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over again and pull through both loops on your hook. So there's one left. That's a single crochet. You're now going to repeat that all the way across. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next. Chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next. Do that all the way across to the very end of your foundation chain. Once you come to the end of your foundation chain, you're then going to chain two and turn your work over so that you're working in the opposite direction. We're now going to repeat those same stitches that we just did but across the other way. So looking at the bottom of your chain two you'll see your single crochet stitch. You're going to skip that stitch. Then next to it you see a chain one space so there's a little bit of a gap into that chain one space, you're going to work a single 
crochet stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Chain one, skip the next stitch into the next chain one space, insert your hook and work a single crochet stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Repeat that all the way across to the end, to the final chain two, and I'll show you what to do when you get to the end of this row. When you get to the end of your row, you'll have worked a single crochet, chain one, and then you have this chain two at the very end that you started with. You might need to pull it apart a little bit so you can see it, but you're going to work your final single crochet into that chain two space. Okay, so into that final chain two space, work a single crochet stitch. That's the end of your row. You're going to chain two and turn your work once more. You're now going to repeat exactly what you just did. So you've chained two, skip that first single crochet, single crochet into the first chain one space, chain one, skip the next single crochet, insert your hook in the next chain one space, and single crochet. So chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain one space. You're going to repeat that all the way across just like you did and then into that chain two, that starting chain two, work your final single crochet stitch. So here I am at the next end of my next row. I've chained one, skip the next single crochet, and then single crochet into that chain two space. Now for the rest of your pattern, until it measures about 55 inches long, you're going to chain two, turn your work, skip the first single crochet, and single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. So you're just going to con uh, continue repeating that final row until the work from the very beginning measures about 55 inches. And then I'll show you how to fasten off and weave in your ends. So for here, uh, once you have worked your 55 inches. I obviously have not here, but I would like to show you how to fasten off and weave in your ends. So you'll have worked to the 55 inches, you're at the end of your row. You're then going to take your scissors and leave a little bit of a tail and just cut the yarn. You're then going to place the yarn on your hook and draw it through the loop and pull it all the way through. So the yarn's no longer attached, you've pulled it all the way through, you can pull it nice and tight, and you've now fastened off. Next you're going to want to weave in your ends, which just means to tuck these ends into your work so that it's nice and neat. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a yarn needle, thread the end of your yarn, onto your needle like so you're then going to take your piece of fabric and weave the yarn in through the middle back through the middle of your stitches so you're just going to weave it back through. You'll want to weave in probably about uh, six inches or so. And uh, 
Sometimes I like to kind of go in and out, kind of follow the direction of the yarn and go up and down and around. If you're working with a smoother yarn, you're just going to want to really pay attention uh, to whether or not that yarn is kind of staying because once you're done, you don't want the yarn ends to come undone. So you're just going to keep pulling them through, weave in about six inches or so, trying to kind of hide it like so. Once you have woven in your ends as long as you would like, just trim it off close to your fabric and you've woven in your ends. Now for the blanket pattern, I added a fringe to the end of my throw. So for my fringe, I'm just going to show you on the corner of my blanket. This is my fringe here of my finished one. What I did was I cut some lengths of yarn and the length of yarn that you cut will depend on the length that you want for your fringe. Each of my little tassels here, I've used three strands and you want them fairly long because you want to be able to fold them over. What I did was I took my three strands, I simply worked them through one of the chain spaces at the end of my blanket, kind of push them through, fold them over in half like so, and then I tied them into a knot. There are lots of ways of doing a fringe, but I find this way is quite secure. So I just took them and tied them in to a tidy knot, just like so. Pull it nice and tight, make sure it's secure, and that's it. I went and I worked one small tassel into each chain one space at the end of my blanket. Once you're finished going all the way across, you're going to just want to lay it flat, kind of brush them forward, take a look, and then just kind of trim all the ends to make sure that they are all nice and even. And that's all there is to working this beautiful harvest throw. You can see my finished one, at least part of it here. And uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial for the absolute beginner crocheter and for this harvest blanket. I'd love for you to connect with me on social media so I can see pictures of your makes and you'll find all the links in the about section of uh, my channel. While you're here, also don't forget to subscribe. And uh, this channel is updated weekly every Sunday with a new stitch pattern. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. Happy crocheting. Bye.